Good morning. Okay, you're on. Okay, good. Uh, it's now 10 o'clock. So why don't we open up the uh, budget uh, meeting committee meeting for the Oregon Racing Commission. Uh, any uh, first thing is the approval of the, the, the budget. And I'm not quite sure since this is the first meeting I've had whether, whether I'm the only one that votes. <laughs> um, I don't know who else. Chair, that's a good question. This actually, um... We actually don't make any votes in the commission uh, in the right. committee meetings. We just make recommendations okay. to the full committee. Uh, okay. When you do the briefing at the full committee, you'll uh, brief on what we talked about and any recommendations you have for uh, the full committee. Got it. Thanks. So anyway, any uh, additions to the budget agenda? No. Okay, seen none. First of all, is old business, and that's the uh, Racing Commission database update. Chair Doherty, one of the things that, um, first of all, before I get started, I, I want to mention that uh, Karen Parkman is not here. She's going to try to jump on later. She just had a brand new, beautiful nine pound grandchild this weekend. I think it's her fifth. She's much luckier than I am on the grandchild department. <laughs> and um, her, her um, horse, Hazel, who's a beautiful horse, is about 12 to 14 days past due now. So she's been sleeping at the barn every day. She's she's very worried about this this um, horse as it's her first um, um, foal coming out. So she's going to try to stop on, but if she doesn't. Um, I told her it's okay. We all understand that that in daylight savings time, she's exhausted right now. Um, going on to the database, the reason we we chose to put this on the agenda is because of the fact that we we had approval for this years ago. Um, but most of the people who were around then are gone now. So we wanted to make sure that the commissioners that we have currently are aware of the fact that we've been talking and working on replacing our database for the last five years. And um, originally, I mean, in five years, a lot changes with budget and so on and so forth. Part of the reason it's taken so long is because of the um, issues that came up with the state um, implementation of the big Oracle database a few years ago. You may remember in the news, there was a lot of issues with the technology and so on and so forth. So they've added so many hurdles to go through now that it's very difficult. And some of the initial databases we wanted to go with, which were very cheap, um, wouldn't meet the specifications that the government now, the state now requires. So we had the money budgeted um, last uh, biennium because we were great. It was a it, the database we were looking at, at that time was a um, a fixed price. It was just a certain amount you pay, and that's it. And then like two thousand a year afterwards. Um, but now the the databases, most of them are doing a um, an annual um, subscription fee. And that fee can be up to 50000 a year, but we had um, 150 budgeted for it. So the money's there for the first couple of years. We just have to keep adding it to our budget. Um, we're going through the procurement process right now that will not be implemented in this calendar year, or um, it won't be implemented. Yeah, no, it won't be implemented until the fall. It's currently in the RFQ process. We've just released an RFQ finally after all this time and hope to have something um, um, operational by the fall. We really need to have that because the database we have right now is has tremendous security issues and mm -hmm. has broken down several times on us. Um, twice in the last month, it went down one for several days where we couldn't get access to any of our information. And so it's a critical need. We're excited about it. You know, the, the vendors that we're looking at, uh, there's a few vendors that can do it. We're trying to get their price down, of course. Um, it will all be online. Um, we'll have the ability to do it on site as well for those people that don't have computers. It'll be bilingual. There's a lot of advantages. It'll save our investigators a lot of time 
Right now, they're spending way too much time doing licensing as opposed to investigating. So uh, this is more of an update for you just to know where we are on that. Oh, great. Thank you. Are there any questions? Um, actually, this is this has nothing to do with the database, but is somebody supposed to be taking minutes on this or are we just going to use the uh, the we're using the recording. Yes. The rec um, today's Malia's day off. This is kind yeah. of a. Uh, Connie and Margaret show today. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, good, good. So, okay. Yeah, she asked if she needed to come in, and I said I think I could handle pushing the record button, but it looks like somebody pushed it before I got here, so I'm thinking she didn't trust me to do it. Smart lady. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Okay, good enough. I appreciate that update because there has, I mean, that's been an issue in many, many, many state agencies for the past couple of years is uh, the database, and now... We just have to worry about employment department getting their their database under control. Yes. Okay. Under new business, and since the legislature just adjourned, we do probably have um, any changes in budgets and that kind of thing. But just I think the first thing under this is uh, the budget forecast. Sure. And um, Karen could give you more articulate on this. Um, however, it basically comes down to the same thing either way. Um, the good news is. Uh, we don't have a ban on greyhounds right now, so we don't have to worry about that impact. The bad news is we didn't get the extra 25% that's going to the general fund that we were hoping to. So a little pro and con. Um, additionally, we just officially lost one of our ADWs, Premier Turf Club. We knew that they were going to go. Their handle was down to practically nothing. What we didn't know is we had, we had thought that we would keep them through the remainder of this fiscal year. So that's another almost $40,000 hit because we get paid quarterly by them. Um, so that's, you know, it's it's every one we lose is going to hurt, obviously. Um, the other ones all look very stable. With that in mind, our budget forecast is fine. We, we won't have to make any cuts from where we are now, but we have to be very careful, of course, and not overspend any areas because we still don't know what will happen in the long session coming up next year. We know that there's gonna be bills to try to get rid of Greyhound. We are optimistic that we can get a five year out um, bill, but we're not there yet. So that um, more or less, we have had some savings, hasn't been huge, but we have had some savings, which is good because we have to offset these uh, costs from Premier Turf Club. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. So the outlook doesn't look bad, but it doesn't look great. And uh, I think that's a good thing in this day and age. Okay. The second thing, legislative impact and considerations. I think I already covered that. I apologize. Well, well uh, I think they I all thought, kind of go but... together. <laughs> it's going to be a quick meeting, eh? <laughs> And I think one thing is that one of the bills that they did have, have uh, dealt with the uh, uh, not being able to bet on greenhounds uh, in Oregon, and that bill did not get through committee. So at least it's there for another uh, at least another year. But uh, I think it's really it is really important to maybe uh, sit there and talk to them and see and see you know before the long session because it will come up. Trust me, um, is that they sit down with us and talk about some of our concerns and see if they come up with a bill that at least if they're going to um, uh, eliminate greyhound racing, that at least it is phased in and not just done at one time. Right. And, and, and we also need some sort of um, substitute. Yep. And I think Connor did a great job at the, uh, they had, in fact, you were there quite a long time um, to uh, inform the gambling regulation committee on how, uh, ORC runs, how the mutuals run, how all of this sort of thing, where the money goes, um, what's been happening. And I thought you did a good job of uh, educating them um, during during the process. So I really appreciate that. And I'm sure they do too. In fact, they they did. Uh, Member Representative Wallen made a couple of comments about how much it did help. So, so that's it. Um, so I guess we're, this can be a quick one. I guess we're down to our last one is that's current request for hub funds. And we did have one request from the uh, Quarter Horse Association um, uh, with hub funds. But I think, um, do you want to give us a little update on hub funds? Like 
do we have any? Sure. Uh, yeah. Chair Doherty, I think um, at this point, just because of, of where we are, it is unwise at this point to release any hub funds. However, I would like to say that I do want to support um, the initiative. I hope all the age, the associations will support uh, the core horses concern on this, that they did have to come up with extra funds because they had more horses to race. And um, mm -hmm. we, for future distributions, I think that should be considered. Um, they may need a little bigger chunk of the pie. Um, that's, yeah. you know, they can all <laughs> yeah, request I... whatever they want and they can make their agreements. But I, I do think that their, their request made a lot of sense. Yeah. But I also and agree it that it just doesn't make sense right now to release it until we know. Yeah. And so we've got two, one, one the, the hub funds just at least at this juncture, um, um, we don't have a tons of flexibility with them, I think. And, but I think that it was important that um, to the entire industry is that the Quarter Horse Association did have X amount of horses and that, that's a good thing. And so I think what it is, is maybe as a, a commission, we need to talk about uh, what happens in the future when something like this happens, that all of a sudden we were planning X amount for hub funds, but then uh, more horses were were entered in races and that kind of thing and what we do because, um, you know, all of you have been around long enough to know that budgeting um, is is not a it's not a finite science in the state of Oregon. So um, that's what it is. Um, but but I think it's an important thing maybe to have the uh, Porter Horse Association at least just address their request. And so we did get a request at the very beginning of the year uh, for twenty seven thousand uh, dollars plus a couple bucks. And I thought it was very, um, um, uh, very, um, the information that you gave was very, very good and very um, uh, uh, helpful. So I just think just with this, and then I will I'll go through and express this when I give a report at our, our next commission meeting. So Nelson's, do you wanna go through and do that? Okay, Leah. Well, I just wanted to make one comment. Um, that um, it isn't so much that we had extra horses. What it really was doing is our horses were filling races that the thoroughbreds couldn't fill. Yeah. And so we were keeping the race meets going in all of these summer race meets. And um, so that it, that's a little different distinction than saying yeah. that we just had a lot of extra horses. <laughs> so right, I, I apologize. Horses. Well done. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. And now that when you mentioned that, I, I did uh, remember that, that it was it was something that kept at least all of the races going uh, for that time. And so, um, right. so the, and that is important. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to say anything? That's good. Do you have another eating? Okay. Um, so obviously we're disappointed, but we understand too, so. Yeah. Well, and this is something that, as I say, we'll, we'll bring it up at the commission meeting when I get my committee report and talk about this. And I believe the commissioners all got, well, maybe they didn't get this information, but we will get at least get them to them in our packet um, because it is good. And it, it just, it kept um, more of the racetracks going and more of the races. And so it's it's a good thing. But uh, as it, at this juncture, we do need to look at, at what the overall picture is gonna be looking like. So anyway. Um, any questions or any comments? Okay, I noticed Karen is, oh, excuse me, da, um, Mr. Owner, Dave. Oh, I, I can't remember your first name. Yeah, Mr. Oh, Owner, thank oh, you. Yeah, um, yeah. I just I just want to reiterate um, um, everything everybody said. It, I understand the budget part of it, um, but it was important for our fair meets to have enough races for our for our people and that it was it was a a burden on the quarter horse association to have to fill those races with quarter horses and and not be funded for that so i just want to recognize i want to thank the quarter horse association for doing that and i want them to know that 
all the fairs are appreciative of the quarter horses and what they've mm -hmm. contributed to the races. And that I do agree that in the future, that if this, if this continues in this direction, which it probably will, at least on the fair side of things, that there should be some compensation for them having to fill other races. And we don't wanna run, we're down to six races. We used to run 10 races a day automatically all the time. We've gotten to this point where we're running eight races a day, and now we're struggling to do that with the amount of horses that we have. Mm -hmm. So it, it was really important for them to backfill our races so we could get to those at least eight races a day at, at Grants Pass. And I know Prineville tries to run 10. They don't always get that, but uh, we're, all, we're all trying to work together, both thoroughbreds and quarter horses to fill our races and have successful race meets. So, okay. thank you. I, I, I really appreciate that input because I can think it's something that, that um, I was not aware of, but I think it's, it's something that we need, need to kind of keep in the back of our minds that this may not be just a one-time um, issue of, of we need to have the, the quarters fill in for the thoroughbreds. And right. so I think that we need to keep on our radar for the future and one of our future discussions and budgeting aspects. Absolutely. So, thank you. Absolutely. Okay, um, that is the only thing that I had on our agenda. Do we have anything else, uh, Connie, that we need to go over about uh, budgeting? And, and no, so Chair, but, um, and Karen, correct me if I'm wrong, but is there any reason why we, I guess, I'm not mute, am I? Uh, is there any reason why we cannot just hold on to that request until we do have funds, or do we need to, will we need to have it resubmit? Karen, you're on mute. My, my brain is on slow-mo. Sorry, I got to get caught up. <laughs> a little sleep deprived. So we can hang on to that request and we can mm -hmm. kind of put it as a placeholder for if there are funds, if we, as we go forward and we see that, okay, we can do it, that can just be the first thing on the list that we fund. Okay, I think it's a good idea. That's a good well, idea. Um, actually, could we maybe set a process so that everyone has the opportunity to apply for additional hub funds? Uh, well, I think- you guys can always apply. There's no rules around asking for money. There's you just when you guys have a need, you ask for it. We either have it or we don't. I mean, that's <laughs> I, know, know, I mean that's well, all the time. I mean, so it's like it's, right. You know, I know since that's all the time. Maybe there could be a procedure where the commission announces we have fifty thousand dollars extra. If the stakeholders yeah. would like to apply, then we have the opportunity to do that, and it's a more organized. Yeah, right. I, we do that at the end of each. Applying. Anytime we've had extra funds, it's usually at the end of the biennium. We've said, right. okay, now you know we've underspent. We have this extra money, and now you guys can go ahead and and ask for it. So we have done that. That's been the process. It's just that right now we don't know what's coming in for sure. <laughs> we we can in our best guesstimate see yeah. where we're at, but. And, and, we, and we will do that uh, close after um, we know have a better idea of next session. We'll let everybody know exactly where we are, and mm -hmm. that's and at that time everybody can make a request. Um, I yeah. do hope that we really consider the extra amount that the quarter horse people have planned, though. Yeah, and I think that I think and part of it is is you know as kind of a little bit of a a, a budget geek, if the requests come in, I I. I I would like to see the request as specific as the quarter horses um, had. In other words, it was this and this and this, and this was the reason and, and so on and so forth. And so I think they need to be very, very specific. And I think part of it with the budgeting too, it's not only um, what we do the state, but there's, there's always that um, in the back of our minds of will be, will the ADWs continue and will we have the off track betting? Cause that is such a, a, a a large part of our our budget so but my request is is we're going to keep this up here and you know we always kind of look at at different requests but i do appreciate that the requests are very specific and very broken down as to as to specifically what it's going to be so that's just something for the future okay anything else karen yeah i just wanted to add to that um for for everyone is that this is a backfill 
request. This was, they put out that money to keep things in play in the moment. It, this is not something that they say, oh, well, we'd like to do this. And so we're asking for the money. Mm -hmm. This is something they went ahead and did ahead of time. And now they're just hoping they can get reimbursed. They, they, ha they didn't have an expectation that they would for sure. They just had hope. So it is different than just saying, well, is there going to be a process for you know, asking for the money, th there's always that that's that's mm -hmm. just kind of sitting there. But but this is a backfill request, not we have extra funds, everybody apply okay. kind of thing. Okay, thank, thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's do, true. Do, do you have a full yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> Beginning to wonder if she's even pregnant. No, she's pregnant. <laughs> Oh yeah, she's oh, got yeah. the signs okay. happening, but you know she's a maiden, and they don't have to—they don't have to show you the signs. They can just lay down and have it. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck. We we'll hope it's today. Uh, anything else uh, for the good of the order uh, before we end the meeting? Oh, this is great. I'll be able to make my eleven o'clock doctor appointment. Yay! <laughs> anyway, uh, th thank you all for for uh, uh, going in here. We're always, you know, in the state of Oregon, always very budget conscious and try to be as transparent as possible as to what things are. So we will continue that. Okay. With right. that, I, that's it. I adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.